everyone, how's it going? Now I asked you guys a few videos ago to send in questions that you wanted me to make a video about and I received a question from Asma Esli. I'm, I hope I'm saying your name right. Okay, so I guess let's just get into some of the points that I want to discuss. Now, a lot of the points I'm going to discuss in this video are going to be related to doing some sort of a lab-based project. Now, if you are doing an MRes or a Master of Research like I did, you may end up doing more time in the labs. So for example, my MRes was a solid 12 months in the lab and we only had lectures for the first three months once a week for an hour or two. That's it. The rest was hardcore in the deep end, learning as you do research. Now MSCs, which are a Master of Science, also do have lab-based projects within them, but it may be the case that they are six months in the lab and six months doing lectures and exams. Now, I guess the first point I should say, which is kind of preliminary, is that in order to succeed in a master's, assuming you haven't applied for one yet, is to pick one that's right for you. Personally, I think I made the right choice in doing a whole 12 months in the lab, but it's different for different people, so choose wisely. The second thing I want to say is that Jack and I, who is somebody who also was on my course at the same time when I was doing my masters, we made a video together talking about our overall experience of how we found it, what it was like, what kind of things we experienced. So I will link that below and that's more of a chatty video so you can go and see that. But let's just get into the points that I want to discuss. Number one, and I think this is one of the most important points if you are doing a lab-based project and it's so crucial to succeeding in your masters, is that it's so important to have an overview of the project before you get started. When it comes to doing lab-based research, or I guess any kind of research, there is so much optimization and so much trial and error and so much repeating experiments to try and get things at the optimum point that it can be very easy to derail and go off and do different things and it's very, very important to have an overview of your project and know exactly what question it is that you're trying to answer. The thing with research is that because it's open-ended and it's so fascinating, it's so easy to think, oh, well, I did this experiment, I've got these results, but that also seems interesting. Maybe I'll do a little bit of that. But I would advise against this here and say, if you are a PhD student, and you had three to four years, it's fantastic, go ahead. I'm sure you're going to discover something amazing. But when it comes to doing a master's and you typically have maybe six months or I guess a year if you do an extended project, then it's really important to focus in on one thing or focus in on, focus in on your main question. And that will save you a lot of hassle when it comes to writing up. So in my own personal experience, I got better at this in my second project, but my God, did I struggle in my first one. Because I wanted to do lots of different things and try out different ways, I did derail quite a lot. And I guess this brings me on to point number two. Don't try and do too many things at the same time. I think I am like the queen of doing this. It's really bad and every time I take on more than I can handle, I end up suffering at some point. So I think it's really important learning to say no, either to your supervisor or in my case, to yourself. As I said, the thing with science is that there are always more questions to be answered than we have time to acquire the answers to. I can't emphasize enough that if you do get this shiny object syndrome and you do lots of bits here and there, when it comes to writing up your thesis or dissertation, you're going to struggle because unless all of these little things fit in together or you find a way to fit them together it's very easy for your project to come across quite disjointed and all over the place so the more concise you can make things the better number three is make sure you have really good communication with your supervisor and that you meet up regularly to make sure that you are on the right path so obviously for the reasons that i just mentioned it's really important for somebody to ground you and point you in the di right direction if you feel like you're scattering off into the ether now and again another common mistake that some people make is they waste a lot of time and then they go to the supervisor and say oh you know i've been doing this for the last two months and it hasn't worked and at that point the issue is sort of with you because i feel like if you have regular meetings with your supervisors 
um, or somebody who can help you. You can explain the problem when it is starting to happen rather than when it has completely blown out of proportion and made you lose a lot of time. So the earlier you catch it and the earlier you discuss with the supervisor, the better it will be for you. And also for your supervisor because ultimately if they want to help you, they'll be able to help you and guide you a lot better before the disaster has struck. Again, this is a lesson I learned in my first project because my supervisor was a clinician, so she spent a lot of time in clinics, seeing patients and just being all over London basically. And I think if she wasn't very good at keeping in touch with me via phone and text, then I would have struggled a lot. So even if your supervisor isn't physically present, just make sure you keep good communication over email, phone, message, Skype or whatever. Pigeon mail, owl mail, your choice. And on the topic of supervisors, I think you should learn when to stop. And I bring this point up because I know a few people on my master's course, not me specifically, but a few people who I spoke to did so much work and their supervisor kept pushing them to do more and more and more. And because of that, they really, really struggled when it came to writing up. A, because they were probably in the middle of something that should have ended a long time ago, so they would have had a chance to bring it to a close. And B, because if you're working literally right up until the deadline, you're going to struggle with finding enough hours in the day to do your write-up. I think it is quite sensible to give yourself at least a week, if not two weeks, to just focus on writing and putting your data together and bringing everything, you know, into a nice shiny little package. And remember that you don't have to have all of the answers. In fact, the point of a thesis is so that you can explore ideas and you can add and bring in new little things. You don't need to discover something new to be able to succeed and do well in your masters. And finally, something that is so important and it was so important to me in my ability to succeed and do well and finish with a distinction was make sure to ask lab members for help. Your supervisors may not always be around and they may, may not always have the answers, but if you manage to create good rapport with other members of your lab or members of other labs, for example, usually when you're in these environments, there are all sorts of people from PhD students to research assistants to postdocs and fellows. And it's really good to approach these people who are all experts in different fields and say, you know, hi, I'm a master's student. I'm doing this project. I know that you've been doing this for years. Do you have any good tips on how I can make this thing a little bit better? And again, nine times out of 10, people will help because they want you to succeed. And a lot of them, not all of them, I should add, but a lot of them remember what it was like to be a student, so more often than not, they're willing to help you. And I have to say that in both of my projects, but specifically the first one where my supervisor tended to be like away quite a lot, if it wasn't for the connections I made and the people who helped me along the way, I would not have been able to pull it together. And this is a good time to give my friend Felix a shout out and say that he really, really helped me through a lot of the technical stuff and a lot of the technical brick work walls that I hit and he was very very kind and very helpful in helping me overcome them. So thank you. I wish you all to find a Felix equivalent. I really do. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you did and let me know some of your thoughts. Alright my lovelies, I'm going to sign off here but I hope this was useful and I hope you are having a fantastic day. Take care and I'll see you next time.